My name is Erin Micklow and I'm here with Jason and RJ from Strung Out. How are you guys? You need a punker name than that. You need like a moniker. Like that's just not punk enough. <laughs> that's my name. Like 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 like, like slash dangly or something. Like <laughs> something. That's the name I was pooped out with. <laughs> I saw that you guys just finished six weeks in the studio with Cameron Webb, who's produced Motorhead, Alkaline Trio, Social Distortion, and so many more. You Can you that, Cameron? <laughs> no, I haven't. I actually, nice. my friend's the last gang produced with him. He's a sweet man, isn't he? He's, he's an incredible human being. Yeah. Let's talk about Cameron for a little bit. And he's yeah. really good at his job. Yeah. He's incredible. He pulls out the best in uh, everybody in the studio and lets you, it's not like cookie cutter bullshit either. He's like, let's try some weird stuff. And it's really rad. Yeah, I saw that on your Instagram. You're like, Cameron says we're going to get weird, so we're doing it. Yeah. If you can interview Cameron, I'd suggest making, I'll, I'll make it happen. <laughs> we got to get Cameron out in the light, let people know. So can you talk more about what it was like working with him? I mean, you guys posted all those behind the scenes videos. Six weeks is a long time to be in the studio. Um, a lot of that was writing. Um, Cameron is a, he's a, he's a character. He's a beautiful man. It just, um, he, he, ma he makes it fun. He makes making records fun again, you yeah. know? Um, it's not all, I don't know, it's not all drudgery. It's something, it's art. He makes it art again. Yeah. And I think we made art, right, Jake? I think so, man. I think he got some really cool stuff out of us. And uh, yeah, dude, we pushed it all pretty hard on this one. Yeah, it looked like it. I mean, I thought it was so cool, all the stuff you guys were posting, and it seemed like you guys were genuinely having a good time. Absolutely. So was that the first time you guys worked with him? <laughs> yes, it was the first time we worked with him. No, it was the second time. Okay. Yeah. We did a record like 11 years ago, 12 years ago with them too. And we always kind of go try other people and come back to other producers. We kind of switch through them. But I think we got a much better record this time. How was he compared to other producers you've worked with? Like, what was it that made you come back to him this time? I don't know. Just that uh, he kind of, you know, really seemed to get the ideas that we were going for. We were talking to him on, on the phone for a while and he seemed to just be really psyched up about it. And, and you know, we did the last two records with Kyle Black. So it's kind of cool to switch it up and not do three in a row. And he was one of the favorite, our favorite guys we've ever worked with. So it just made sense to try him. And uh, I think we're all really happy with how it turned out. about last time that you had a beer and it's finally out the beer is out can it's you talk well. about we, yeah yeah uh, they've got a tasting booth over there the astrolux golden ale try it out everybody and uh lucky luke brewing out of palmdale made it for us and it's incredible we're stoked on it once again super stoked it's like champagne <laughs> the champagne of uh, palmdale champagne? yeah palmdale champagne. palmdale champagne it's, it's pretty badass. like i really like the logo of have it, it? yeah i have tried it i tried it at the show um in canoga park you know it yeah, it's good. Yeah, you yeah. can order it through craftshack.com and just Lucky Luke, just hit them up. So can you talk about the work that went into making it? I mean, how does that go down when you start to <laughs> uh, make it? It was, a, it was a labor of love. <laughs> yeah. They brought over some different uh, beers that I, I had been in touch with some of the guys because I gave one of the dudes guitar lessons and uh, he just brought over like five different beers, you know, a bunch of cool German beers and we just kind of came up with a, a hybrid of them. And it's a coal shale, it's a Cologne era, uh, area based ale, so kind of like a Stella or something like that. Very easy to drink, but it's 6.2%, so it's going to get you fucked up. It's going to get you. It'll get you. <laughs> it's 
going to get you. You seem like you're yeah. the most passionate about it. You're a beer guy, right? I am a beer guy. Yeah, you yes. definitely, because I remember the last time I spoke to you guys, you were so stoked. You were like, ah, oh, we're coming out with a beer. It's a minor dream come true. You know, I got to say, my, my, my dad, like, looks at me in a whole new light now. <laughs> Since we came out with the beer, he, like, holds his head all, up high and when he says my all. name. And this is my son. He's yeah. got a beer. Yeah. Is, uh, you, None you, of your other accomplishments. We've exceeded. Just the fact that you have a beer. I think the beer did it. Yeah. Took it over the top. We've exceeded <laughs> expectations. <laughs> on your Instagram that you have like this massive rehearsal space. Does that help you when you're preparing to play a big stage like today? It is no longer in existence. Yeah. So we what jam, happened? We, we wherever it we down actually. Yeah. The yeah. record was so fire, it just exploded. Yeah. yeah. We, don't, we don't want to talk about it though. So now we don't have a practice room. So if anyone wants to share a practice room. Well, so what are you going to do? You have to find a new space and then. Basically, yeah. I don't know. We practice like how many times for this? Like twice? Uh, yeah, today. and then one twice of it. Today. Twice today. <laughs> yeah, just in that trailer. Twice so today. I think we're, I don't know, we're going to be all right. Can you talk about maybe some of your early days when you were transitioning from playing smaller stages into playing bigger stages? Can you share some stories from that? We're still was it? Doing that. I still like, I haven't transitioned. I don't like a big stage. How about the transition from big stage back to the small stage? That was, that, that was tough. <laughs> yeah, getting into the big stage was like, okay, and then we got smaller again. Now we're back on the small stage. But I like the smaller stages. They're, they're rad. But I think it's like, you know, in any industry, like the entertainment industry, the music business, it's like catching waves, you know? Yeah, for you sure. remember those big stages and they're awesome, but you play the same for the small stages. Absolutely. Just to eliminate the word industry from the whole equation. Yeah. And that's when it's all beautiful. Make it all about the art. Make it about whatever, but, but the industry. And it becomes beautiful no matter what you do, where you, no matter where you play it. It's amazing to see the fans coming out to these shows and the, the turnouts to these shows. Like the scene is so fucking alive. It's it's amazing, dude. And yeah, we've never needed the industry. We've never needed radio or, or MTV type stuff back in the day. And it's worked. It's worked for all our bands here today. That's awesome. That's why. Well, thank you guys so much for taking thank the time you. to talk to me today. I'm thank you for having to us. Play again. Right.